Twin Snakes earlier in the marathon, and now I'm going to be doing another two games for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here joined with my friend Mini Omega King. Hello. And uh, Minnie's going to be helping me with commentary for uh, Ghost Babble here. And we're going to be running a normal difficulty on actual hardware. This is not an emulator. I'm actually using the uh, Game Boy Color cartridge. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to get going here in three, two, one, go. Thanks for the good luck. I'm gonna need it because the uh, RNG is not is uh, set right when you start the game for later in the run. So depending on how things go, <laughs> it all happens right there and then. So this is Metal Gear Ghost Babble released in 2000. This is the uh, fourth Metal Gear game that uh, Kojima was involved with. And right at the start, we're going to be just dodging some guards. This movement's really simple. We're just just kind of running up. Um, so I've never run uh, Metal Gear 2 or Metal Gear 1, but many has. And there is several pretty major differences between the games. For instance, we can run in eight directions rather than four. And the screen scrolls rather than like shifts constantly. And of course the hardware is a bit different. We're running on a, you know, it's a Game Boy game, not a computer game on the MSX. And the stage uh, one's really simple. There isn't much to talk about. Just some tight lines that you have to make on the last screen. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward stage. Nothing really uh, too important to talk about. But you guys have to give me a moment. I'm like, the the programs in my brain I'm trying to recalibrate since it's pretty early in the morning. I got my cup of black tea with me because I'm going to need to get some rejuvenation during some of these long cutscenes. Stage two here, we're going to be uh, infiltrating the Fortress Galloway and be using these cameras to our advantage to open some doors that would normally would have to open ourselves, but opening doors is slow. Why, why open a door when someone else can open it for you? You know? Exactly. That guy leads you to a handgun suppressor, and we don't even pick up the handgun, so we definitely don't need the suppressor. So a lot of this game is really just uh, knowing where to go. There's a fair amount of like maze-like structures to this game. This whole area is like a big maze. But really all you have to do is like run around the outside. This guy is a little bit random depending on where he ends up. I'm going to have to adjust my movement. Thankfully he was on the bottom so I just run up rather than having to uh, deal with him in the middle. You want to end up in the middle because then you're already fairly in line for the next piece of movement. This is a fairly long piece of dialogue. Uh, Japanese in this game is faster than English just because the script is much shorter, much more condensed with the uh, characters. You save several minutes, like five minutes, uh, just from the script alone. Because there's a lot of text in this game. The in-game timer does not actually tick during um, Codex. So the the time save from that is just RTA, it's not IGT. Um, the in-game timer also does not tick when you are in your inventory screen and changing your items and weapons. Yep, whenever you're in the codec screen, inventory screen, uh, whenever you're 
loading an area when the screen goes black. There's a little route change from last time I ran the marathon. We avoid getting spotted by that guard. And that should allow us to get past this guy. Yep. And then three columns. One, two, three. Go down right. Oops. Don't get caught up on corners like me. That's bad juju. This guy can hit you, but thankfully he didn't. You're going to see me running on diagonals through a majority of the game. And in part, that's because Ghost Babble Guards are fairly dumb and they attack depending on what movement, what angle of movement you're going. 129, pretty good. Pretty Sub solid. 30 is very nice. But stage three is where things start getting a little bit more difficult. We have the uh, infamous water skip that I'll be attempting. And we also have uh, one of the harder alert movements in the game. So this is where things start getting amped up pretty quickly. Yeah, the water skip is pretty difficult, but it, it saves a good amount of time. So it's it's worth going and going for yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, thankfully, the second part of Water Skip, I'll know if I can go for it or not. Another little routing change that LCC taught me. Shouts to LCC, who, even though I almost beat his world record, he still has world record. I'll be trying again. But uh, he's done a lot of routing changes to this game, including the uh, Nikita Skip later on. <clears throat> so, uh, Ghost Babble Runners, there's only, <laughs> there's like two of us who run full game. And so with the water skip here, I need to run along this line, and I'm going to be timing my inputs and doing specific inputs so I can uh, transition from one screen to the other while the wave is going through that load transition. Okay, that was very late, but that's fine. I'll just uh, take this wave safe. It's about as late as you can go. So if you, if the wave is like the first wave is like that, or the second wave rather, you need to hear the uh, wave as you transition the screen to be able to skip the third wave. That's why I was sitting on the ladder. But um, as long as you recognize that you can't skip the next wave. It's all it's all dandy. So not too bad uh, for a marathon. The, wor the worst thing is getting carried back. That's what you really don't want happening. And right here, we're going to be uh, running through this alert. It's very important we don't mess up our movement here because that guy that we just passed could hit us if we do. Run diagonals. And then we'll follow this line, run diagonal there. Ah, oh, that guy hit me. That's okay, though. That guy can hit you. Big thing with this game is just knowing which direction to hold on each screen because the load transitions are very fast and some rooms are so demanding that you need to know which direction to hold or else you can't achieve certain strategies. So movement is just paramount importance in this game. And here's a room that tests your movement. See if I can do the nice fast second. strat. Nice, I got it. So if you don't mess up your movement in that little maze area, you can run past that guard before he turns the corner. But if you mess up at all, he'll spot you, and that's bad news because we can't use this elevator if we're on alert. You'd have to wait it out in this room. And it takes a little bit. Yeah, we try to only take alerts that are helpful. And the reason why I'm uh, opening up my menu there is because... 
when the elevator when you press an elevator button or when an elevator arrives on a floor you can uh, pause the in-game timer but the animation still plays so you save some IGT time that way so it's a little trick that uh optimizes IGT Okay, that guy was being a little bit daft. That's okay. Usually he tries to smack the wall, but he just ran up and down. Even even though they tend to do certain things, they don't always do what you want them to do. Yeah, uh, the later guards on, are still random. So. Yeah, guards still have some RNG to them. They're not always so stable. It's good that I got spotted by that guard because now this door is open. Which is very good. And now we run up to this door and that was actually a really smooth stage three i'm happy about that besides uh missing the uh second water skip uh this is not a, this is not an emulator this is on a cartridge on uh using the game boy player on a gamecube just one of two ways you could play this on hardware the other one being uh, the Wide Boy and N64, and that's hilariously expensive and not even wasn't even a consumer device. I'm gonna take a sip here. This is where we get introduced to the Black Chamber, the uh, Foxhound Dead Cell unit of this game. Be fighting all four of these schmucks in the run it looked like there was like additional two people there but those aren't people those are puppets puppets made out of the remains of of the uh the serial killer that we're gonna fight this game's rated e for everyone by the way um <laughs> yes e for everyone e for everyone But I'm glad you like the look of it. Uh, I'm using uh, S-Video cables on a GameCube and uh, using the Game Boy interface software rather than the Game Boy Player software because the Game Boy Player software, even though the hardware is great, it's a you know a Game Boy Advance essentially. Uh, the software included is really poor. It's not really. It's very rough looking it doesn't use proper resolution for a game boy there's input lag um it's just like the hardware is great but the software is pretty poor so if you compare this footage to game boy player footage like with the software included uh it's gonna look quite different so for the most part we're just gonna be following um so I believe this is Chris. Chris yeah, Chris Jenner. Yeah. We're, so we're going to be following Chris for a little bit in this stage, but um, the main thing, or like the first big uh, random moment of this run is coming up. Uh, there's going to be a puzzle we're going to have to solve later on, and the solution, or like the order that you have to press the buttons in is going to be random, but the solution will always be the same. Yep, so we're going to are... see how lucky plywood gets. <laughs> there are four solutions to the uh, to the puzzle. Whoa, okay, we're good. <laughs> Oopsies. Yeah, you were... It's I, starting um... already. <laughs> Ooh, it's all right, though. You really don't want to get caught by that guard because then you can't use the elevator. But you can't actually be too fast in that room and get caught by that guy, so, you know, it's it's all planned, everyone. Oops, that's not the right line. There we go. So, yeah, there's going to be four potential solutions to this puzzle coming up. Uh, I actually don't know which one is really the fastest. I haven't done, like, the frame counting for every solution. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much, RTA because the uh, randomness for this door puzzle is not a significant factor for the run, really, uh, compared to the RNG later on, so. 
in fact it's the rng that's more impactful early on is the elevators how fast the elevators arrive than this door puzzle i would say because the elevators can be faster slow i take out my tea bag everyone it's important to not not steep for too long tea tips And the nice thing about this run is that there are a few short breaks throughout for dialogue, and all I have to do is hold B uh, to scroll through the dialogue as quickly as possible. So I'm going to play it safe and pick up this ration just in case I mess up dog movement. It shouldn't happen, but uh, I want to be careful. All right, so... That button right there that he just pressed is the solution button. Uh, and that is the first pattern. So I'll be going to the first switch. Yeah, first switch, third switch, fourth switch, and then first switch again. One of the buttons on here is a reset the puzzle button in case you get messed up. So you could be like going along on the solution and then you hit the wrong one and then you mess everything up. Yeah, this but puzzle is kind of confusing when you <laughs> play it casually. Um, but you just need to shift the two doors into that position and press the solution button, or what I call the solution button. Okay, enough nice. of that though, because we're about to deal with the dogs and these dogs are pretty rough. You really don't want to get hit by them because they can practically stun lock you and kill you and you don't have a lot of health at this point in the run so movement here is really precise uh oh i bumped that guy okay the woofers didn't get me we're all fine this screen is pretty rough we're gonna pick up these grenades and just kind of hope that this dog doesn't mess with me too much okay he didn't that's that's good <laughs> uh, we just kind of cross our fingers that we don't get hit there. And then down again. Right there. There we go. You don't want to turn too early or too late. Or else you'll aggro a dog. I'm going to punch here just to buffer my movement. So I don't attract the dog. Everything here is extremely deliberate. And this screen is a lot harder at first, but you just kind of lure all the dogs into that little corner and you're good to go. All right, I'm gonna, since I have the ration, I'll use it before I go into the fight. We got the first boss con up here. Uh really isn't too much to say other than you just gotta have really some precise grenade throws and if you time it right you can deal damage uh right when his eye frame is yeah i count out like seven flashes for slasher hawk and there's a little trick you can do where you can do additional damage before he enters the second phase where he six his bird on you Nice. Alright, so this is phase two. Now we have to deal with the boomerangs and slasher hawk. Oh, he didn't keep on moving. Good fight. Yeah, that was a good fight. I really like the boss battles in this game. They're, uh, really show the potential of, uh, 2D Metal Gear boss fights, I think. It's a real shame that they stopped making 2D Metal Gears after this game because, uh, 2D Metal Gear, I think, is 
kind of underrated, if you ask me. I think I, I'd I have to agree. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would. I think I would we'll have been hashtag biased on I, that I'd one. <laughs> The next stage here is the barracks. We're going to be in the barracks for the next two stages. Um, this is where the infamous box sorter puzzle is. Uh, and that is not really the trouble at this stage. Unless you, like, forget to pick up... <laughs> unless you go into the wrong box sorter or, like, forget to pick up whatever you're trying to pick up in along the, the route. Um, the box sorters are the easy part. Pretty much... All the hard parts are between the box orders because this is one of those stages that uses a lot of elevators and so if you go on alert uh, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. And some of the movement in this stage is very precise. Where just a little bit of mistake and your movement will cause an alert. So let's hopefully not do that. <laughs> My grenade count is very good though right now. You want to have more grenades, not less. Because grenades are very overpowered in this run. We use grenades for several of the bosses and to achieve a couple of tricks. One of said tricks will be in this stage. That's correct. We'll be uh, using grenades to our advantage and uh, death abuse. So that trip is very simple. Just ride along and you'll get the red box. And here is uh, a tough piece of movement. I'm going to have to try to time out my movement so I can get through the screen. Okay, we got past that guard. That one's a bit tough. And now this guy. Wait for him to pass. And then if you do it right, you'll be able to pass that camera before it shows up. So you gotta be very good on that cycle or else that camera will spot you. Yeah, that was really good. That is a very precise movement right there. It's not easy. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of my favorite screens in the game because that really just demonstrates how cool this game is with the movement. It, it just looks hard, <laughs> you know? And it is. It is. Not to just uh, toot my own horn. But it, it, this game does require a lot of practice just because of screens like that. So here we go, trip two. This trip we're going to be uh, swapping to the red box uh, to pick up a increased card key level on the card key. Thankfully, we don't need to have a key ring of cards in this game like MG1, MG2. So that's that's pretty nice. But instead, we trade like harder movement, <laughs> harder movement, and. Uh, I don't know how rough the uh, memorization is for movement screen to screen in uh, MG1 and 2. I haven't run them, but it is pretty rough in this game. Get past that guard. Wait for the door to open. You don't want to hold the direction on card doors because Stink will actually act as if that's a wall he can go against. And that loses you frames, so you have to time your movement. Oops, turn, turn, turn. Elevator buttons. They're my arch nemesis in these are games. So trip three. When we uh, drop from the uh, cargo area is going to be another piece of tough movement that's very tight and you have to be very careful as well because uh, guard RNG could screw you in the end and the reason that is 
guards because guards can actually like decide to like look around before they move if you like knock to distract them and if you're not ready for that you'll get spotted because you're moving too fast it's pretty trolly i have to say but you just have to keep it in mind for screens like the one coming up Yeah, sometimes you can, like, knock and then think you've got the right away, and you'll start going, and then they'll turn their head and catch you. So it's just something you gotta, you know, deal with. Yeah, you just have to keep it in mind, or else you will, you will suffer the consequences. Okay, we're good. Yeah, you saw that guy. He looked around. Thankfully, he did it at the end of his movement rather than at the start. That is the uh, piece of movement that's really key. We don't mess up. So I'm glad that went smoothly. Then knock to run past that guard. And I feel a little bit more relieved, but the stage isn't done yet. We still have the uh, death abuse trick coming up. So you're intended at this part to make two more trips in the box orders. One of which is to pick up uh, thermo goggles, but we skip the thermo goggles in the speed run. You don't actually need to pick them up, which... The game actually acknowledges, which is pretty cool. They actually thought about <laughs> crazy speedrunners trying to skip thermo goggles in this game. I have no idea <laughs> why, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's pretty cool that they thought of it. They, an they anticipated it, I guess. They anticipated that some, or I guess they anticipated that maybe people wouldn't be able to, like, piece together the puzzle. <laughs> that they would just, like, you know, and brute, force, brute force their way through yeah. the dark hallway. Yeah. But we like to think it was made for us. Yeah. Well, this game, we like uh, in the individual levels has a uh, speed run requirements like you have to be at a certain stage in a short period of time so they were kind of thinking about it i think I'll explain this after i do it all right hooray so if you kill yourself there, uh, the placement of the lasers gets reset, so those punches are just a pure buffer, so I know when I can cross, because there are uh, lasers in that area. And if you see me kind of flailing around a bit, that's just because I'm still a little bit rusty, and... The exact <laughs> angle can sometimes uh, throw me for a loop. But some screens, it's not that important. Okay, hopefully this guy had nice. He shot the wall. This is a nice little piece of RNG right at the end of this stage. How these guards are to you. But it looks like I'm being treated fairly well. Yep, no smacks. That's really good. So we're going to death abuse again. Very good. First try. Happy with that. First try both times. First try both times. Yep. 
this stage went very well for a marathon. Really happy about that. So now we blow up the wall. In the corner there is the thermal goggles. You're intended to go down to this uh, floor twice, but instead we just say we don't need it. No thanks. And uh, at the start, or during the next cutscene after the stage completion, uh, Dr. Jimmy Harks here will actually give us the thermal goggles. He's like, hey, you might want these. <laughs> We just got some cutscene time right now. Yep, got some time to drink my tea and uh, enjoy the art of Ghost Babble, which I uh, think is one of the highlights of this game. Are we going through all the games? No, we. there's a few games that aren't being run in this marathon, but the vast majority of them, I believe. We're going through a fair chunk of them. Yeah, probably like... 70-75%? Something like that? Or maybe like 65? I don't know if I want to count Acid 1 and 2 because no one has like seriously run that single segment. So now we're going to have to go through the barracks but uh, the power has gone out. So I hope you like looking at at this red virtual boy-esque gameplay because you're going to be seeing it for a little bit. So coming up, we're going to be hopefully doing some fancy footwork here to not get smacked by this guy. Nice. Ah, uh, but he smacked us. That's unfortunate. And I'm going to stun this guy. And that's so these card doors are open for me rather than me having to open them myself. And again, we're going to just kind of hope and pray I don't get smacked, which I didn't. It's very good. Picking nice. up that machine gun for the uh, boss in this stage. Yeah, since we never picked up the handgun, we really, really need that machine gun. We skipped the 5-7, but you need... You really don't want to skip that, because we'll be using that for a few of the bosses. Uh, this way. Again, don't mind me. Just making sure I'm actually going the right way. Now, the games that aren't in this marathon include Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear NES, Snake's Revenge, Rising Revengeance, Ground Zeroes. Mm. That's pretty much it, I think. So yeah, just some no-nonsense movement here. We're trying to get our way to the boss of this stage, Marionette Owl. Uh, this boss, the very start of the fight is not random. So if you know where to aim and when, you can hit uh, Marionette Owl. But after that, what move he does is not static. And... Uh, I'm going to equip my glill. There we go. If you get the night vision goggles, you can actually see this part in color, but uh, NVG pickup is way too slow. So, as far as you guys know, <laughs> Marionette Owl is just some weird white silhouette. All right, here we go.
This is not a good pattern. You don't, I don't like the, uh, rows. The rows really suck. There's patterns where Marionette L like separates from the the dolls, and that's what you want because you can't shoot the uh, the dolls. That's because they'll uh, cause a spray attack. You need to hit Marionette L. But when Marionette does that stack attack, it's kind of hard, uh, in my experience, to hit Marionette L versus the the attack patterns where they spread out across the room then uh, the boss is a pretty easy target. I haven't needed to use many rations in this run, which is pretty nice. Yeah, low ration usage is always good. Yeah, it's better to main, uh, keep a high ration count if you can. That way you just don't have to pick up more later. It saves a little bit of time. Uh, this puzzle's a troll. This isn't actually a puzzle. It screws with everyone the first time they come here. You just run through the tours. It's really mean of the developers to do that, but that's Metal Gear for you. So this part is, the stage is really straightforward. The game can try to kill you, and it has successfully killed me in the past, but you just go prone at the right spots to pick up uh, mines. In fact, they killed him last time he ran the same <laughs> Yeah, the last yeah. marathon, I got killed by artillery strikes. And that happens. It's very uncommon for that to happen. There's a Metal Gear Gander. We get some lovely Game Boy sound effects. Yeah, I, I really, um, for those of you who already know, probably, I'm a big fan of this game. I love the art, love the the sound, the plot's good, it's pretty good, and, uh, I've been playing, you know, I played this game when I was a kid, so it's, uh, near and dear to my heart. I am very biased when it comes to this game, so, uh, I'm glad I can share this with all of you. Because not a lot of people actually played this game, unfortunately. Yeah, Ghost, Ghost Babble is a very good game. More people should play it, more people should run it. You should run it. Oh my you lord, dude. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh no. Did it happen? Oh, it happened. Oh no. Yeah. I'm not taking any chances, though. I'm, I took out my rations. <laughs> As long as that doesn't happen, uh, it's a consistent 43 uh, with good mine pickups. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes the artillery is not very nice to you. And here's a very fast videotape. This guy's speedrunning this videotape. It's got a lot to say in a few seconds. We'll see if he can beat his personal best of a 4.0 later. So, he doesn't mess around. No, he doesn't. He starts the video tape he says he needs to and cuts it. <laughs> they don't have a lot of tape uh, with the Gendra Liberation Front, you know. Tape is pretty expensive. I think they're using beta. Um, so, uh, stage 8 is where we're going to be actually skipping several minutes of gameplay. We'll be skipping up, picking up the Nikita uh, by abusing invincibility frames, which is pretty great, but we need to uh, go to the basement first. Um, this stage and stage 9 are linked. Stage 9 is also in this power plant, and stage 9 is where uh, the majority of the RNG and the really significant RNG is in this run. Uh, I'll be, throughout this stage and the next stage, I'll be looking for pillars 
and these pillars have exposed parts uh, where the structural integrity of the uh, building is weak. And those spots I'm going to have to plant C4 at the base. There are four pillars, and there's... Mm, I think it, it's it's like well over a dozen spots. I can't re I can't recall how many spots there are at this point. I just know where they are, and I just kind of route out my movement to check the pillars as I go along. Uh, there's good pillars and bad pillars. One pillar actually loses you like an insane amount of time, like two, like a minute and a half or something, because you have to crawl through a vent. And that's no fun. Vent crawling is very slow. We don't want to do this besides when we have to. Shoutouts to diagonal vent crawling, by the way. Crawling diagonally here saves me time on turning. Waiting there a moment is just so I can get past that guy without too much trouble. And I'm going to look up here because this is a pillar spot. Okay. So we don't have there. And I'm going to also check the other side of that same pillar. Usually I don't check this, but in a marathon it's a good idea to check. Gonna knock that guy out so he doesn't knock me on my butt. This is like one of the most common spots in the game. This that spot is really annoying if you're going for world record. Ah, that sucks. So I'm gonna be using a little trick here to uh, wait out the alert. You can do that casually as well. You just go across screen transitions. I really should have uh, done that a little bit more though, because I have to wait now for these guys to walk away. It's okay though. But yeah, stage 8 and stage 9 are why grinding for world record. I, I really don't recommend it unless you're a big fan. Because, uh,. Stage 9 is really rough. It can swing your run by minutes. Literal minutes. So this is where we're going to do the Nikita skip. And uh, we're going to be positioning Snake in such a, such a way that when a guard comes along, he's going to knock us down, and then we're going to be able to use our iframes to uh, get across the electric floor. So I just need this guy to cooperate. Sometimes he's a little bit dumb, though. And if he's... There we go. Oh, but I died! I'm sad! <laughs> Man, I knew this. I knew something was going to happen. It was bound to happen, and if it's going to happen, it's going to happen on on this stage, unfortunately. It's either going to happen on stage 8 or 9. That's my bad, though. I should have had the uh, ration equipped before um, doing that. That's okay, though. Um, my estimate is long enough that this is fine. So there's the pillar there as well. Okay. So there's two pillars in the basement. You don't want any pillars in the basement. Yeah, there's no need to freak out over this. This is not a big deal. I really should have menued for rations um, in this elevator, though. Don't do what I did. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. 
So yeah, world record is not free in this game as far as because uh, RNG is a huge factor, but um, third place is really free because uh, the only two runs that uh, actually use Nikita Skip are the two runs that are uh, world record pace. My uh, second place time is literally one second behind world record, so... Okay. I would uh, really prefer it if you'd help me out. Okay, that's good. Alright, we're out. So, even though I died and I had to run my, my butt all the way up here, that is still faster than doing the intended method for this section. It takes a really long time picking up the Nikita. You really don't want to do it. Yeah, the intended method is like a maze thing you have to solve on the second floor. And uh, it's just a big pain, so... Yeah, not do only that. do you need to crawl through vents, I believe, you also have to... <laughs> you have to go against the wall very slowly in a maze. So, not not so fun. Here we got Pyro Bison. He was the Fury before the Fury was a thing. He's very purple. And he loves burning things. That's one of his hobbies. But one of my hobbies is uh, stun locking bosses, him. so we'll be doing that That's instead. Too, yeah. This guy can be, st is honestly, casually, you can probably stun lock him. He's not very difficult. I threw a little bit early there. So I ran towards him just so I can check that pillar spot. There's only one more pillar that I need to check, because uh, we've already seen uh, three pillars, one of which is on the first floor, and then uh, two in the basement. There's still... Just looking for the third. Uh, or, I mean, the fourth. Whoops. Yeah. It's early for nah, me as well. It's hard. <laughs> I know. Numbers. It's sometimes a challenge for me, counting to ten in speedrunning. It's too much to think about. Got other stuff on the mind, not numbers. Yeah, I got, I got a lot, of, a lot of things on my mind. Like, why, <laughs> why is there so much <laughs> luck in this stage? <laughs> why does my run mostly ride on stage nine? Um, this game is still fun though, even though this stage is pretty brutal. Uh, we still don't know, though, if we're going to have the worst pillar spot, which involves crawling through event for, like, 90 seconds or something ridiculous like that. It's really painful. Yeah, the worst um, pillar spot loses you a lot of time. Like, if, if you get it, um, even if you're not going for world record and you're just going for a good time, if you get it, you might as well just reset. There's no point in going for it. You might as well just reset. There's no point in... Okay, that's the fourth spot. That's not a really good spot, but it's... I guess it's better than the vent, but it's like one of the worst spots on the first floor. So at this point now, I already know where all the spots are. Now it's just a matter of uh, getting to them. If I was going for a uh, world record, I would be not looking at certain spots because I'd be banking on getting good ones naturally. You don't want to uh, look for bad luck because you are you don't want bad luck. See no evil, hear no evil, that kind of thing. See no evil, save time. That's That's pretty much how it works, but... In a marathon, you want to check for the bad spots. You gotta check for the bad spots. So now we need to go blow up the pillars. That's the objective now. Oh boy. 
Mm -hmm. You have to come down here to uh, get that cutscene in order for you to start doing that. Um, you can't just start blowing up the pillars on your own. The game won't let you. Or you can do it, but nothing will happen until you trigger that cutscene. Yeah, it's because story-wise, uh, the intention at first is to go blow up the generator, but since that's blocked by electric floors, even though Snake has proven that he can deal with electric floors no problem, Colonel says we're going to have to blow up the power plant instead. Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter. I was going to use chaff here, but I'm going to have to run through this anyways. I think I will chaff here. I'll chaff at some point. I don't really know the optimal routing here because I never want this spot anyways. The spot really isn't good. Wait a minute. Oh, right, right, right. I think... Can I actually blow this up with uh, Granada? Can I blow this up with Granada? I think I actually have to go through the vent. Okay, no, I don't. Good. <laughs> I would have been sad if I had to go through the vent. Price is avoided. Yeah. This still isn't a good spot, though. You have to make a huge detour. At least we get to hear this wonderful MG2 remix. I, this is one of my favorite uh, alert songs in Metal Gear. Alright, gotta pick up those grenades. Can't forget those. Always pick up grenades. They're very, very good. We'll be using a chaff here to skip these cameras. I use all the chaff that I pick up. I pick up one pack and I use every single one of them. Same with the stuns. Every stun I pick up, I use. Hey, thank you for the luck crazy and uh, I'm glad that, that you're a fan of the, the game kangaroo this game does have its fans they are out there it's like the x-files i know they exist <laughs> the truth is out there there are ghost babble fans whoa whoa did you see that guard <laughs> what happened to him what, what did he do <laughs> All right, I'm gonna save a little bit of time by blowing that up <laughs> so I don't have to run around. You stand a little too relaxed there. And, uh, <laughs> you stand a little too relaxed there. And, uh, so now that the uh, plant is about to collapse, we have to uh, run before the time. Uh, Ooh, I was like right on the fire. <laughs> Let's pretend that wasn't the case. Um, so unfortunately, there are no stairs. We still have to ride the elevator very calmly, even though the building is collapsing. Don't go in elevators if a building's collapsing, kids. It's a bad idea. So the final middle finger, so to speak, of this this level is these boulders are random and can slow you down because this stage wasn't random enough already.
So yeah, not a world record caliber stage nine, but that's quite okay considering that I uh, died on stage eight. But this is still pretty good pace for uh, a marathon run. It's better so pace this... than my last marathon <laughs> <laughs> than last time. <laughs> yeah, he. And by the way, this guy did beat his uh, personal last best time. of a four point oh with like a three point three or something. So, uh, good job, General. Very impressive. He makes the most use out of all the film he has. He doesn't screw around. <laughs> yeah. He's got to save the rest of his film for uh, the football game. <laughs> exactly. He wants to make sure he doesn't miss it. <laughs> In between uh, leading a revolution, uh, General, you know, he's he's got he's got to entertain himself. He has to keep himself sane. And say goodbye to Jimmy, he just got blown up. And not like in the social media kind of way, I mean like he just got blown up. E for so, everyone, everyone. <laughs> e for everyone, exactly. It's the best e meme of this game. Also, uh, the uh, cigarette is not a cigarette, it is a fogger, and therefore Snake was a, uh, a vapor before other people were in the vape nation that's how cool solid snake is oh we didn't even really mention this game uh is a what if story if metal gear 2 never happened so this this uh base we're on is where the uh uh old metal gear 1 base was even though it isn't <laughs> It makes no sense, <laughs> but uh, there are 13 stages to this game, and we're now on stage 10. So here's a funny part. Uh, the game lays down Nikita ammo for you, but <laughs> we, we, we don't have it, so the game's just like, all right, you don't have Nikita, you can't pick this up, even though it's literally right on the path. Ghost babble, everyone. Okay. So, so coming up... This is pretty much just a boss fight. Yep, it's get up the hill, fight the boss. Uh, this is the helicopter fight. And... Arguably the... Okay, I actually do have the max. You get four rations for the next stage. 20 grenades going into this fight is good. Um, this is arguably the hardest helicopter fight of the 2D Metal Gear games, I think. I think MG1 and MG2's helicopter fights are fairly easy. This one is a They're little jokes. bit more weird. We're going to try to manipulate this boss to not do this machine gun attack. I really don't want him to do this because this attack sucks. We want missiles, even though they do way too much damage. I mentioned this fight is hard. <laughs> We're gonna try to time our nade throws. I do not think I'm gonna get, uh, be able to skip the first uh, missile barrage. The, the you, if you do the fight well, you won't get the bombing run. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to do enough damage. Yeah, I'm not. So you, you want to be able to skip this bombing run. The bombing run is a huge waste of time. Okay. Not, not a great uh, boss fight, but if you don't get uh, the missile attacks at the start, um, it's kind of bad news bears because the helicopter flies faster if it's doing the machine gun attack versus uh, standing still and firing missiles. Also, that fight is pretty scary on very hard. Because you don't, you can't really tank too much. I have yet to uh, do the routing for the big boss run in this game, um, but from what we can tell, it's pretty brutal. 
especially if you were to really talk about full optimization of the route, like it'd be a pretty tough run. Because the restrictions are fairly tight. You can only use one ration and maximum of five alerts. And you could use literally all those alerts for some purpose, so. But I'm looking forward to routing it. It should be fun. So we're uh, coming up into end game here. We got the uh, maintenance base here, stage 12. It's got a boss at the end, and then Metal Gear, and then the final boss battle after that, and then we're and it's over. Uh, hitting the one hour mark here is it's pretty good, yeah. I really like the uh, music in this stage. The one on the stream is a little bit cropped off, so it looks like we just uh, restarted the run. We're at a nice 20 second pace right now. Oh, 20 seconds? Nice. So I think this is going to be world record, everyone. Well, you heard it here first, folks. LCC, pack your bags. Get ready to move to second place. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So right here, uh, this is the other Nikita skip, the Nikita skipper. Or we just kind of use I abuse iframes again to skip using the Nikita because Nikita is slow. I think as well. This is like. Do, do Metal Gear MSX or MSX2 have any skips? Uh, Metal Gear 1 has a skip on the tank. You can skip the tank. Oh, yeah. And you also can skip having to talk to Madnar to figure out the combination to defeat Metal Gear. Because if you just already know it, then you can just go fight him. <laughs> These guys can be a pain. Sometimes I like to throw my stun there. There's two different places you could throw your final stun in this area of the game. Thanks for the luck, Toma. And hello, Tyler. Hope you're having a good morning. Tyler will be uh, finishing off his marathon fittingly in a few hours, so stick around for that. He's going to be running a Metal Gear Solid 2 on PlayStation 2. Originally he was going to run Substance, but uh, apparently his Substance disc does not load past Plant, so uh, uh, we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> I'm glad he uh, checked beforehand. And enjoy the longest elevator ride in this game. This is the uh, anti-ladder. Yep. Uh, I know the tone. I can I can match this tone no problem. Uh, so you guys like the ladder in MGS3. This is the ride to hell, so to speak. Oh, uh oh. It looks like um the timer uh, fixed itself, and now we're back. Uh... I'm pretty sure this is all rigged. Base. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Roy is trying to sabotage your run. I'm gonna pull out my uh, rations just in case I mess up my movement here through this minefield. This is uh, similar to Merrill's path in uh, MGS1. You do not want to take this path. It's very slow and circular so yeah, if you like the elevator here um be sure to stay tuned for uh mgs3 where um we will also be climbing the ladder well, i thought you were gonna say stay tuned because later on in the stage we're gonna ride in a similarly very long elevator it's well that too we're gonna get another elevator ride 
So if you liked the first one, don't worry, there's a second. So you can enjoy it more. Don't worry, there's a second. This area is very scary and I've uh, ruined runs because of this uh, room. Okay, we're good. We have to travel through there one more time. I'm gonna get spotted by this guy so he can open the door for me, which is really nice. And then just run by these guys. But I got knocked down, which is just the risk reward of uh, doing that strat. Unfortunately, go through the door. <laughs> so this area, you need to plant C4 to blow up walls. That's pretty much it. Uh, this is, as far as we know, the only required alert in the entire game. You can skip all other alerts in the run. But this one, you, you do need to have at least one alert here to blow up these walls, and you can't silence the explosion. So right here, I'm gonna plant the C4 and equip a ration so I can tank this explosion. Saves me the time of having to uh, run past the pit. And two squares is enough to be able to get away from the explosion. And uh, right here... Actually, no, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to pull out the Nikita first. Then pick up this card. Now, I'm going to equip the card, if I can find it, and the stun grenade. And I'm going to use a stun here to get rid of these guards. And that's where I used my last stun. Use this room to uh, get rid of the alert. And hopefully not get caught here, because that's really scary and bad. Okay, that was pretty good. Pretty good luck there. And once again, rinse, repeat, get spotted by this guy just to s potentially save some time. Hopefully not get smacked. We didn't. It's good. And then we just run over here. Equip my card and my uh, glil, because I'll be needing that for the next boss. And that's 450. 450 is really tough and you can choke pretty hard here if you get caught in that uh, laser room. Yeah, it's a pretty tricky uh, floor. A lot can go wrong really quickly. Yeah, it's a pretty tricky uh, floor. A lot can go wrong really quickly. Just getting my flex on, drinking my tea. Hope, I hope some people are out there in chat drinking some tea or coffee. I only have 12 bullets, so they are enough for the boss. I'll be picking up another pack of ammo. Over here. Do not, you poo-poo head. That guy is a poo-poo head. All right, this is uh, not supposed to happen, you know, but uh, I'm all about uh, exciting um, time loss. Okay, I need to stop going in there like that. I need to like flick immediately. Is anyone even going to show up? Okay. Pardon me. This is one of my worst stages, by the way. This is the stage that uh, usually kills my ability to get a world record. Because you don't actually need literally perfect RNG to uh, beat record because of this uh, elevator IGT trick. But you still need to have good pillar luck on stage nine it's not like you can just uh 
not get good luck. You need at least passable luck. And then good execution on the other stages. And as you can see, this is also the elevator button. I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, you can punch the the door itself to open the door, which is pretty great. And uh, I'll show the uh, Easter egg here since we have some time. If you go over here, you can actually see the uh, remains of the uh, original Metal Gear. Again, it doesn't really make sense at all that the original base is here and it's like 100 floors down. I thought it got like blown up at a nuclear explosion, but you know, whatever. It's fun. It's all for fun. Uh, how many rations do we have? We got two. I'll pick, you know, I'm going to play it safe and pick up the... Uh, additional one up here you know there's no reason not to this is not gonna be a pb so so here's a black arts viper he is the one of the big antagonists of the game he has a prosthetic arm <clears throat> mgs5 um <clears throat> and he likes shaking it like this So, I need to see which direction he runs in, and if I uh, move properly, I'll be able to manipulate him to make this fight easy-peasy. So these lines aren't active until they disappear. People get kind of confused about this fight, but they don't hurt, start hurting you until... They disappear, and if you shoot them, then they're gone. Ooh, I almost got hit there. Good fight. Yeah, that was a really good fight. Yeah, that was a really good fight. We got two more stages left, and then the uh, game is done. Yep, last two stages are essentially just boss fights and cutscenes. I'm pretty happy about this run. This went a lot more smoothly than last time. Many. <laughs> yes, this this is going much better. <laughs> I'm not losing my mind. You're calm, relaxed, and you got a nice uh, cup of tea. Exactly. Well, the thing is, is that uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Galil again um, for the final stage because I don't want to do backup strats. But ideally, you don't actually pick up that uh, ammo pack. Uh, ideally, but it depends on your resource management and how well um, Marionette Owl went. So I should need four rations, but it's just a safety net in case I get really, really, really bad luck on Metal Gear. Because this fight also has its share of RNG um, in the fight. The second phase of the fight. The first phase is completely static. It's my C4. There it is. So it's safe to say that this is also, uh, like the helicopter, this is the hardest 2D Metal Gear fight. Uh, there's two phases, and uh, Metal Gear does not mess around even on normal difficulty. One of, his one of its attacks, the missile attack, can wipe out half your health. So you got to be pretty careful here in the second phase. But first phase, we're going to be blowing up this dude's legs. Okay, good. 
my movement is trying to influence him to stop as early as possible. We don't want him swinging his legs around. Alright, that was fairly good. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we don't get to hear more of that song. Yeah, that was a good phase one. So that's phase one now. Metal Gear has no legs, but <clears throat> it's not over yet. We have to take out the top part, and each of these red circles are the vulnerable points of Metal Gear. This is Solid Snake. Okay, that's good luck. You want the turret on the shoulders attacking us as quickly as possible. And then just spam grenades. But you don't want to see this because these little turret things mean we can't we can't hurt the shoulders because the, the shoulders are like out and like shooting at us. So instead, I'm just going to spam. <laughs> the other thing we really don't want to see is the missile attack. It's really slow and it's also super dangerous. This is the missile attack. It's slow and it's dangerous. Right on cue. You have to pay attention to the radar here if you can. How many missile attacks you get is random. You get zero, you could get three. The fewer the better. Good. All right, we took out the shoulder turret. We should be entering final phase here. Okay, so final phase is the flamethrower phase. We don't have to worry too much about the flamethrower since we have as many rations as we do. We can just tank it and just uh, refresh our grenades over here. Now it's uh, pretty much the straight shot for the final boss, which we we haven't really fully we don't fully understand how to really manipulate this boss in like the best way possible. But we're gonna be fighting Black Arts Viper again, and he'll be we'll shoot him, and he'll spawn in one of four places on the map. And depending on your position in the map, he'll spawn in certain areas and not others. Because I, I guess the way it works is he can't spawn where you're looking. He has to spawn away from you. This is one of those fights that can be potentially really fast, but we don't really know how to like make it as fast as possible, like in the TAS. Fun fact, this was the boss that uh, <laughs> made me pretty much like caused me to lose record by a second, but uh, you know, I was really okay with it because it was still a good run regardless. Um, if anyone's interested in learning this game, I am in the process of making uh, video tutorials for every stage in the game for normal difficulty, and uh, even though this game is fairly challenging, uh, I think it's a lot of fun. It's It's got good breaks in between each stage with the cutscenes. You don't have to mash through codecs or anything. Um, movement's a lot of fun. So here, I'm going to pull out my Galil and just 
kind of just shoot the guy. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Shoot the guy when he moves into position to get shot. And don't get hit. You don't really want him going up there. See, I don't, like, why do you run around circles there? I have no idea. And that's RTA time, 119.52. We'll uh, sit through credits to see the very good run in game time. Good yeah, pretty good, good run. I will be uh, submitting this game for AGDQ 2019, uh, fingers crossed, because, uh, yeah, this game is really niche, but uh, out of all the Metal Gear, like, Metal Gear games that are just, like, not Metal Gear Solid games, this is my favorite of the ones I've played. Um, I'm, it's, it's a pretty infamous meme in the community how much I like this game so this is like a it's a real treat playing it for you, for all of you out there uh, if you're interested in running this game you don't even need to really run full game there's a lot of options for running this game between uh, individual levels there's uh, special stages where uh, you have to complete stages under certain parameters like collect all these foxhound emblems or you know uh, go up the hill and avoid barrels like it's Donkey Kong. Uh, it's, it gets pretty wacky. And then there's a uh, 90 VR missions as yeah, well. VR as well. Yep. And VR is a uh, pretty cool in this game VR since it's well. the only 2D VR there is. And a lot of the stages are uh, D makes of the MGS1 VR missions. So there's a. Uh, a little bit of something for everybody. So, uh, you know, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'd be happy to help. We need a we need another full game runner at some point. <laughs> I am the I'm still the newest uh, runner, and I've been running this game now for over a year. Uh, but hey, uh. Uh, people, some people will come around, I'm sure. Uh, even if this game is pretty niche. Uh, I love it, regardless. And it's the last 2D Metal Gear game. Respect your elders. Thanks for the GGs, everyone. Yeah, most of the runs for this game are done on emulator. I'm the only person who's run on hardware. And part of that's just because... Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of a hassle getting hardware set up for this game. It's not like an insane hassle. There's plenty of Game Boy players out there, but... You know, you have to have a GameCube and a Game Boy player and the cartridge. Uh, you cannot run this game on Super Game Boy 2. That's a very good question. You can't run Game Boy Color games on Super Game Boy 2. Well, you don't necessarily need the Game Boy Player Disc if you're playing on Game Boy Interface, which is what I'm doing here. I do also have the Game Boy Player Disc, but as I said earlier in the speedrun, the uh, GB Player software is hot garbage. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're really set on using the official software but the official software is not it's not as cycle accurate as game boy interface it doesn't have this nice input display it doesn't have um 240p output it's 
It's just not that good. They spent the clearly the a lot of the work for it was uh <laughs> probably marketing and the hardware itself since it was it's literally a Game Boy Advance attached to a GameCube. Software, however, leaves a lot to be desired. Unless you're you really want a timer so you, your kid can only speed run for an hour or whatever. <laughs> That's about it. And the cool backgrounds, but even that. Uh, ex I think uh, it's the fellow's name Extrems who uh, works on GBI. Yeah, Extrems. He uh, pulled out the uh, wallpaper for Game Boy Player. So you can use those as well if you like. And plus, uh, the uh, emulators for Game Boy are pretty gosh darn accurate. GameBat is a pretty good emulator. And uh, the game actually looks better on emulator and you get more controller options, so that's pretty nice. I'm just a bit of a purist and I want to run on hardware. Yeah, I've always played uh, Ghost Babble with a, a Super Famicom controller because I find it more comfortable. And Final Time is a 42-43. Not bad. Not too bad. Uh, my uh, personal best is a 39-34. And uh, record is a 39-33. That's third so, place on the leaderboard. Third place on the leaderboard is a 50-26. So pretty huge gap. Yeah, huge gap. Be uh, and that's so mainly gap. thanks to Nikita Skip. Nikita Skip saves you. I wasn't kidding. It saves you several minutes not picking up the Nikita, even even if you die <laughs> like I did. It still is worth it to do Nikita skip. So yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching Ghost Babble. I will be returning shortly after a, a break, 